Welcome to this video tutorial on how to render large-scale fields in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be looking at how to render a field of wheat using completely free assets directly in Rhino. I've started by creating this simple landscape using a series of contours and then using the patch tool to create a terrain over this. If you want to watch any other videos on creating terrains I'll put a few links in the description so you can look at these in more detail. Now to begin, I'm first going to find some wheat which we're going to be using as a way to scatter this across my landscape. To do this, I'm using this free 2D map you can download from TurboSquid. I've put the link of this in the description of the video. And this is a really simple low res file of some wheat that we can use as a cutout in our file. Now when you download this, you'll end up with something like this, which is a sort of PNG image, which is essentially an image without a background but we need to start to convert this into texture maps before we can use it in V-Ray. So to do that, I'm gonna open up Photoshop and we're just gonna begin by dragging this in to create our texture maps. Now I need to create two texture maps, a, a diffuse map, which is essentially the color of the corn and an opacity map, which tells V-Ray how to cut the corn out from its background. To create the diffuse map, I'm gonna use this image we already have and I'm also gonna create a layer below this pick one of the kind of darker colors of the corn and then fill that in in the background just using the color and the fill tool there to fill it in. The reason for this is when you cut it out you don't want to end up with a little white edge or black edge around the object so by filling it in the same color you avoid that happening. Once we've got that we're just going to save that as a copy and we're just going to call this diffuse and we'll save it as a JPEG there. Once we've got that, we need to make the opacity map. Now an opacity map is essentially a black and white image that tells V-Ray how to cut an object out from its background. Where it's white, it will leave it solid and where it's black, it will cut it out. So we need to first select the corn and make this white. I'm gonna do that by holding the control key down, hovering over the corn layer, and then clicking there to select the object. Then we'll make a new layer on top of this, make it white, and again, use the paint bucket tool to fill that in. Below that, we're then gonna make another new layer, make this black, and we're gonna fill that in with the paint bucket as well. And that essentially is our opacity map. Again, we're then gonna save that out as a copy, make sure it's a JPEG, and save it as opacity. And there we have our two texture maps that we're gonna be using to create our corn. Once we've done that, we're gonna go back into Rhino and we need to make an object to apply this texture to. Because this is just a simple 2D image, all we need to make is a simple kind of 2D plane, which is gonna be our corn. I'm gonna use the vertical plane tool for this and we're gonna make it around a meter by meter. So I'm just zooming in here. I'm gonna look at my units down at the bottom and I'm just gonna make it a meter wide and around a meter high, like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you've done that, we're then going to zoom select it on that object, so we're zooming in, and we're going to open up V-Ray to create our material. In V-Ray, we're going to click the Create Asset option, we're going to go to Materials, and we're going to create a new generic material and call this Wheat. Under this material, we're going to go to the Diffuse tab. If you can't see this, it's because it might be hidden under this little option here, so you click on the small arrow and you can see the material settings. We're going to click on the texture slot here, go to bitmap, and we're gonna locate that diffuse image that we just made, and we'll load that in. Then we're gonna take that, and we're gonna apply it to our plane, like so. Now if we just quickly skip to the rendered view, you can see it's been applied there, but it's still got the background. So the next thing we need to do is chop this out from its background. To do this, we can then scroll down to the opacity map. Again, we're gonna, in the texture slot, go to bitmap, and we're just gonna load that opacity map in there. Now, wherever it's white, it will keep it solid. Wherever it's black, it's gonna make it disappear. And this will essentially cut that image out from its background, as you can kind of see here. And there we have our cutout image texture. So this is now ready to go. Now we've got our kind of image and we've got our huge landscape here. So essentially what we need to do now is scatter this little object over the top of my landscape. To do this, we're gonna use V-Ray's scatter tools, and I'm gonna go back to a shaded mode in order to set this up. 
Now, usually this works best when you're in a perspective view. It doesn't really work well from above because we've got lots of little 2D cards. They're going to still look like 2D objects when viewed from above. You kind of want to be viewing them flat on so you can see that image texture that we've applied. So I've set up a camera here, which I'm going to be using, which is essentially a perspective view of my landscape. What we're then going to do is in my asset editor again, we're going to go to the create new asset. We're going to go to geometry and we're going to create a scatter here. And this is essentially going to scatter our object across our landscape. We're going to begin by selecting our object here and clicking on the add guest to add that to our scatter tool. Then we're going to select the landscape, right click on the scatter and click apply to selection. And there you can see it's starting to scatter little versions and copies of that wheat we made across our landscape here. Now if we go to our view and we open up our frame buffer and we're just going to start to render that out, we can see there we've got these little bits of corn that are scattered on the landscape. Now at the moment it looks very barren so we're going to need to up the number of these and also up the scale of them. You can see I've actually added this dirt texture already to my kind of ground here. I've just done that by creating a material, giving it a diffuse and creating just a kind of image map of some dirt or some ground which I've downloaded from Google which I've applied there. It's a very simple material but it's just a background that we can give a slightly darker ground to our base here. Now in order to play around with the scatter settings we need to select that scatter object and we can go into the parameters here. I'm going to begin by playing around with the number of instances which is essentially the number of copies of this object that we have. At the moment we have a thousand and I'm going to up this to 10,000 to start to increase that number on the landscape. Now because this is a 2D card that we're using it's actually very kind of low poly which means it will be quite easy for us to add lots and lots of these without crashing the computer. This is a good reason why you might use a technique like this because it's quite low intensity on the render engine and on your computer and you can create fast waves of fields and foliage using this technique of just using 2D cards instead of dense 3D models. Now you'll see at the moment the scatter's got a limiter here which was limiting me to 10,000 objects. I'm going to up this to 100,000 like so and I'm also going to up the scale of my object by going down to the transform tool and under random scale we're going to up this to 2 to 2. You can add a little bit of variation in here if you want just to add a bit of variation to the field so maybe a 1.8 to 2 just to start to balance out and create a little bit of height variation in there. Now you'll see I'm still a little bit patchy here, so we're going to go back up and under the instances count I'm going to up this again to 50,000. And here you can see we're starting to get much denser fields, it's actually looking like it's nearly full up of wheat now, which is what we want. So maybe just upping it to about 70,000 should do the trick. And all you need to do is it depends on the amount of ground you're trying to cover, the scale of your object, the angle of your camera. You're just trying to get it to look good from that particular angle. And there we have our kind of field of wheat, which is working quite nicely now. Now as one last trick, we can actually start to cut out some shapes from this field as if you were having kind of tracks for cars or tractors that might be moving through. To do that, we can scroll up here and we're going to look for this density area that we can find here and you can see there's a little map option there which allows us to control the density of this using a map. This works much like the opacity map we had that wherever it's white it will keep 100% density, wherever it's black it will keep 0% density. So for instance if we load in the tiles we made the tile color white and we made the mortar color black. And I'm just going to up the thickness of the gaps between the tiles what you'll find here is it will actually cut out in a grid shape patterns in that ground based upon this colour. So you see wherever it's black it's chopping it out, wherever it's white it's leaving it solid. And we can actually use that to help us create sort of tracks and paths in our corn. So if I did a count of four you can see there we're cutting that out from our ground. Maybe we go up to five but we make them a little bit skinnier there. And then we're getting these nice tracks being cut into our ground. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how you can render large-scale fields using free assets you can download online. 
I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on rendering or modeling in Rhino and V-Ray please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.